Hey everyone, how you doing? It's Vicious, and today I'm bringing you a tutorial for Photoshop. I decided I'm going to broaden out my tutorial prowess a little bit and bring you some stuff, not just for video games, but also for Photoshop and video editing. I'm really good at those things. I picked up a lot of techniques over the years that could really be useful, so I figured here and there I'll bring a few of them to you. This one, however, is coming out because I have an employee that works with me. I guess I should say a coworker. And he uh, is a photographer, and he does. So he just got a green screen, and he's asking me how to remove the background in Photoshop. So that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do today. It's also called chroma key sometimes. Usually in video editing, it's called chroma key. Photography, more or less, people call it green screen. So I'm in Photoshop CS5 right now, but most of the stuff I'm going to show you is also in the last few versions. This is a pretty small image stock from Atomic Studios, so it's not ideal. You can see a lot of pixelization in here. It's, if I go to the actual size of this image, you'll see that it's not that big. But for the sake of tutorials, it'll work. So here's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to go ahead and double-click on my background and just give it a name. That turns it into a standard layer, not a background layer. And the easiest way to do green screening is to use the color selection. You can select by color range. You can go to it from up here if you want. Select color range. You get this eyedropper tool. Right now I have a preview on. I'm going to turn that off so you can see the image. And I've already got the color selected accidentally. So let me just pick it. Like I'll pick black. So let me explain how this works here. You click on a color. You have three different options here. Choose a color. Choose additional colors. Remove colors from your selection. If you hold down the shift key while you're selecting, it automatically adds to it, like if, as if you had selected this manually. Since I clicked on that black bra area, you can see this white areas on this little preview here are what's currently selected on the image. So if I was to hit OK right now, that would be kind of like what I would get like this. We don't want that, so we'll step back. Select color range. Here's what you want to do. Click on your green somewhere, and then start shift clicking all around because there's different shades of green here. The better your resolution of image, the better your lighting, the better the green screening, the better this will come out. But make sure you click everywhere around until you get a really good selection of greens. I recommend that you go ahead and do something like this grayscale preview. That way when you adjust the fuzziness, which is basically the range, you can adjust it and get a really good idea of what it's going to look like. Usually I like to go too far to where I see it starting to make the subject transparent and then back it off until I see no transparency, like right there. Looks good. So we're going to hit OK. And we have a selection now that's selecting all the green screen. Some people might be tempted to hit the delete key and delete the screen in the back like that. That would be a destructive editing process, and I never use destructive editing unless it's a very minor project. Here's how I would teach you how to do this. We're going to undo again. Go ahead and click on the Add Mask button here, and it's going to add a layer mask. Because the selection I had was reversed from what I needed, instead of cutting away the background, it cut away the subject, and that's okay. Click on your layer mask, go to Image, Adjustments, and invert. The shortcut for that is Control I. And now you can see the person is white, the background is black on the mask, so it's masking out the green background. While we're at it, I'll go ahead and take my selection tool, and I'm going to fill this with black by hitting Shift and Backspace to get the fill command, and that's going to take that out of there as well. So this is looking pretty good already, you have to admit but there's ways to make it even better. So there's a new thing in the last few versions of Photoshop that gives you more refining options for masks, and that's exactly what it's called. If you go under Selection, you'll find Refine Mask, and it gives you a whole bunch of options here. This edge detection is very powerful, and it gives you smoothing, feathering, contrast, shifting edge, and decontaminate colors is amazing, especially for uh, hair and stuff, it's really great. But for, for this one, I'll just show you the smart radius. Let me zoom in a bit so you can really see what we're going to be doing here. So you can see how we got some pixelization here. It's a little bit jaggy. When I go up to 
refine mask. It's a small picture, so I'm just going to give it a very small smart radius. I'm going to give it a 0 0.01 pixel smart radius. And you can see that it already had some effect on it. If I turn it off, back on, and I'm going to give it just a little bit of smoothing, like one. That's all I really want to do, just a little bit. That's all it really needs. And that really smoothed it up quite a bit. If you go too high, it's going to start giving you some serious transparency on the edges, which could be it could look good depending on what you're doing with your image. If you're going for realism, though, you don't want to have too much transparency because then you can tell that the subject was photoshopped into the new image. So for me, this looks good. And if I was to hit OK, we get a really nice green screened chroma keyed image that we can now put into any other image we want. Now, if you have an older version of Photoshop, I'm going to show you what you might do if you don't have the refined mask. Again, depending on what you're trying to do with your image, you might want to click on your layer mask, go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and back this down to about, you know, 1 or 0.5 pixels, something like that. And that will kind of have that same smoothing effect to kind of get rid of the pixelization that you might have on your subject. So that's the way you would do it on the older versions of Photoshop. All right, guys, that's how you do it on Photoshop. Now, what I'm going to do right after I finish this, I'm going to have another video coming up for how to do this on GIMP. I am not really good with GIMP. However, I did play with it enough to figure out how to do green screening on GIMP. And that's for all the people out there who uh, want to use the free alternative to Photoshop because Photoshop is a pretty expensive program depending on how you get it. So I'll see you guys in that next tutorial video. I hope you enjoyed it and found this one useful. And I'll be bringing you more tutorials here shortly.